Here's that pleasant music waiting on hold for the DWR press conference. February 21st, must be time for another Orville update. Care for some day quill? The flu this year is rough. I gotta get back next close to the fire. On today's call, please signal by pressing star one on your telephone. Your first that. question from Ellen McMeyer with Associated Press. Hi there. Um, I've got a couple of questions for Ted. Um, one of them is about um, Lake Oroville as as a water reservoir. I I, I know that to a certain extent you've had to keep. Lake Oroville down while you're working on repairs. I'm, I'm looking at the state reservoir site right now, and it says Lake Oroville's at 41% of capacity. And I'm, I'm just wondering, what is that requirement to keep Oroville down, the level down, in, uh, because of the, the problems? Meeting with the LA Times, Jeff. After um, I wrote my last story about the progress you've made, uh, I got some calls or emails from construction guys saying they couldn't figure out why this was costing so much um, given the cubic foot volume of uh, the concrete. Is there an average cost um, that you can cite for the concrete placement and how that would compare? I mean, there that are seen as necessary to um, DWR infrastructure, like other dam repairs and things like that? Um, I'm not totally sure I understand your question. Um, I, I guess... Um, and a reaction to some of these lawsuits that have been filed against DWR? Uh, yeah, I can't comment on pending litigation. The right, question thank you. kind of provincial here. We have... Uh, a pilot has brought us some photographs of some earthwork that's being done on the south end of the dam uh, adjacent to the green spot. Uh, it's on the abutment of the dam. It appears to be like the digging of a ditch. Do you have any idea what's going on there? That's, that's really all I needed to know. The green spot. <laughs> Missed the last update, so I got a little catching up to do. On the secant cutoff wall, it looks like you dug down and nipped off the top of the wall and are building a box beam type structure on top of that. What's the purpose of that box beam structure? Is that going to provide the secant cutoff wall with a more positive connection with the RCC buttress and uh, ramp?
soon. And then what's the finish detail on that? Will there be another um, solid concrete OG weir type wall there, or will it just be an RCC ramp flowing over that, all that? It's an RC, it's a, it's a uh, shaped RCC finish with um, some uh, grouted riprap on the downhill side of it. And it's kind of a smooth transition. It's not a ski jump or anything like that. Correct. It's a waterfall. Yeah, okay. Um, is there any kind of a, a, cable, a cable tension involved with that design? Tension cable involved with that design? Uh, no, no post tensioning cables. It's all uh, drilled in steel bars. Okay, so the videos I was looking at with the cables in the videos, maybe that was how you were sawing off the top of the secant cutoff wall. Exactly. Gotcha. Yep, wire saw. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, this sudden change in temperatures uh, recently is that affecting operations? Uh, nothing from construction. The um, you mentioned in your update an RCC borrow pit. Uh, how much RCC material do we got left in the old pile? I mean, oh, we have a couple hundred thousand tons of rock that we can process, rock and sand, and so we need about another million, close to a million two remaining to crush. Wow. So you got to get that from the borrow pit. In other words, we're going to go through that. We're going to go through all that we've, all that you've piled up there is not going to be enough to, and I suppose that's because the uh, secant cutoff wall got moved down to a total of 730 feet. That's correct. Got, yep. Gotcha. Okay. Um, let's see what else did I have here. Uh, blasting around the dentates, are you just widening that area up? Or are you building a, a road right down the bottom of there? Yeah, the blasting is done in that area, and that was to get access into the into the bottom end of the dentates. Okay. Uh, Hyatt Power Plant, anything new going on there? Are we still at five turbines or six? We are at five. Okay, and we're still waiting for number six any time now? <laughs> um, I actually do think I have an update on that, but I can't find it in my notes at this point. I can send you an email, or maybe Risa. <laughs> I think Risa's on the line. She could remind us. <laughs> so I think I emailed um, something on that. I'll email it to you. And to clarify Ellen's question about uh, current lake level, in other words, are we currently on schedule with the 2017-2018 plan at 725 feet today? Is that pretty much right on schedule? It seems like we're a little behind schedule, but is that on schedule? Um, well, obviously, like, scheduling weather is not really um, our shtick, but <laughs> we are well under what would require additional outflow from Hyatt. So at, at, by the end of February, if we are still under 750, we the plan does not require for increase in Hyatt outflows. So we're at 725. Um, okay, sorry, so actually, by the end of February, 775. So we're still... Um, within 50 you know, feet or so? That we're still well below what okay. would activate additional releases. Okay, very good. Uh, and anything new to report down at the Thermalito power plant? Uh, no, but I will send you an email if I, uh, if you got I, I gotta find this. I, I know that I have something on both of those, but I will send you an email. And if anyone else on the call wants that information, just let me know. Okay. Very good. Thanks for the okay, info. I have a couple things to get back to you guys on. Actually here, I found my, um, email about the, the power plants. So, um, DOBR is aiming to have two units of the four existing available at Thermalito up by the end of 2018. And regarding Hyatt, uh, DWR was targeting mid-2018 to bring the sixth turbine back online, but a recent test of the refurbished turbine shutoff valve showed the need for additional repairs. So now we are targeting the end of 2018 to bring the sixth turbine back online. Um, DWR is planning an outage of Penstock 2, which includes uh, turbines 4, 5, and 6, 
Um, but the timing and length of that outage will be based on the hydrology and the interim operations plan to ensure that we can um, safely manage lake okay. levels during the outage. And that outage would be uh, for regular um, maintenance and upkeep. The green spots <laughs> are back. No, they did some testing there near the green spots to, just to put an end to the rumors about the green spots. And they use, they use that to reignite the rumor. <sighs> From a pilot. <laughs> so let's go find out what the heck is really going on at Oroville. And we got a lot of work to do because more work and more concrete is going to be poured this season than even was last season. So you'll remember from previous episodes the purpose and function of the secant cutoff wall to protect the emergency spillway shown here in yellow from head cutting erosion should the emergency spillway ever have to be used. This is the erosion that during the emergency caused the evacuation. Geologists determined that the only competent bedrock to drill the secant cutoff wall into was located 730 feet below the emergency spillway, much further than the original design, with the final location shown in red here. So now with the secant cutoff wall poured, the top is exposed and cut off with a wire cutoff saw to make way for the cap beam. Holes are drilled into the fresh cut to grout in the rebar for the cap beam. So why do we want to go to all this trouble with the cap beam? Well, remember on the secant cutoff wall, about every fifth secant or so is a gap to allow the natural groundwater to flow through the wall. You cannot allow that naturally occurring spring water flow to build up behind the secant cutoff wall and below the RCC. You gotta let it flow through. So that creates breaks in your wall design which will be structurally tied back together with your cap beam. And the neat thing about this cap beam is it's not a straight beam. It, it follows the terrain, all the 1,000 or so feet of the secant cutoff wall. So now with the secant cutoff wall 95% complete, workers can begin pouring roller compacted concrete in earnest along the emergency spillway, starting as early as next week. About 250 employees currently working right now. May 1st is still the go date for the, be for the beginning of the phase two portion of the rebuild of the main spillway, but I suspect given the current conditions and the low water levels, they're gonna be able to get on that even sooner. Kiwit's approaching 920,000 man hours with zero injuries. Good job, Kiwit. Hit like and subscribe if you found this information useful. Thanks, we'll see you here. I'm getting back next to the fire.